Hi, this is Charles from ATO, and in this video, we're gonna take a deep journey into our new Studio Electric Grand Piano, otherwise known as the Yamaha CP70. This is one of the most extreme sample projects we've done for quite a while. The library actually contains over 96,000 samples. And the CP70 is a gorgeous instrument. It goes back to the 70s. They were trying to figure out how to make a portable stage piano, unlike the normal grand piano. And they created this beautiful CP70 electric grand piano, which only weighs about 300 pounds or so. So you can actually move around on stage, which is a big deal. But as we went into the 80s, the whole concept sort of died when we got digital pianos and all that stuff. But in some weird way, this is actually the early version of a digital piano, if you will. And the best way to describe it is that you have a normal grand piano. The CP70 is a 73 key piano. But what makes it different is that you have pickups inside of it. So it sort of functions like an electric guitar, if you will. So you've got normal piano strings, as you can see here in our beautiful 3D render graphics here. But then when you play it, the signal is picked up by pickups. So it's somewhere between a grand piano and a guitar, if you will. And it certainly has a very distinct sound. Bands like Tokyo Keys, Phil Collins, Peter Gabriel, like the whole Genesis thing, Billy Joel, Keith Emerson, and a variety of others, Grateful Dead, used the CP70 extensively in the recordings in the 70s and early 80s. So, so you're probably gonna hear a familiar sound somewhere between a grand piano and an electric guitar. So we're certainly in a familiar realm um, in terms of sort of taking a piano and making something different out of it. And with this project, we really decided that we wanted to sample it in a way that we never ever have to sample it again. And that sort of breaks down in four different things. First of all, we have our normal articulations here. We've got sustains, staccato, and staccatissimo. We actually have pedal up and pedal down recordings for the sustains. Then we also did a prepared version. It actually sounds best when it's open, so we had full access to the strings, so you could do stuff like picking the strings and plucking them and muting them, play harmonics and all that stuff. Then we also sampled them through two world-class reverbs, the TC6000 and the Sony Bricasti. And on top of that, we have a variety of microphone positions. As you can see here, we have mixed we have a British amp, British amp room, actually the room microphones. We have what we call the USA amp, and then we have the USA room. And then we have three different DI signals coming out of it, both a crushed, a warm, and a clean. And I'll be going through these um, in this demo as well. And on top of that, if it wasn't enough, both the main articulations over here and the prepared articulations were recorded to tape. So if you really want the sound of true tape, this is not plugins, this is actual tape, um, then you can get that really warm, sort of a little more gritty, uh, feeling where some of the frequencies sort of burst out a little bit, which happens to tape. So you have every single option you could possibly imagine. But let's just get started here by listening to the sustains. And you can see we have all these controls here as well. You can actually control the velocity response here, resonance, release triggers, all that stuff, sound of the keys, tremolo. You can also use stacking here, which actually combines different articulations if you want more staccato fields and the sustains. You can add analog noise and so forth. But why don't we just get into it here? Let me play a little bit here with the DI signal clean combined with the USAM room. And you know, while we've got the microphones loaded here, why don't I just um, play this piece again here and then just go through the microphones. It might click a little bit when I do it, but at least you're gonna get a feeling for what the different mic sounds like. Let me play another example with the same patch here, but this time I'm also gonna add a little bit of the staccato. I have a different patch playing a midi file here, playing the staccatos. You're gonna hear them very clearly, these very, very short notes, and then I'm gonna solo a little bit uh, with the sustains on top of that. And the staccatos have uh, some delay on them as well. But check it out, because it's actually interesting how you can use the CP70 to sort of cover all frequency spectrums. Um, even the bass I'm gonna be playing is coming from the library itself. 
But let me actually lock it down here so you can see the different patches playing here. Uh, it's three different patches playing, one sustain, one staccato, and the last one is playing a bass note. As I mentioned, the instrument actually comes with both pedal up and pedal down as well, uh, individually sampled. So when you have the pedal down, you get a more of the resonance from the strings around everything, and the and the whole timbre of the instrument is a little bit different. Uh, let me play a little more reggae-inspired piece here, but using pedal up, so you can hear how it gets a little more clear when you don't have to pedal down, just like a normal piano. Let me also show you um, a little bit of our reverbs here. In this case, I'm using a preset that's using the Brucasta reverb. We sampled all the notes, both through a TC6000 and a Brucasta. So you actually have both options available in the library if you're really into like the best of the best when it comes to reverbs. So uh, let's check it out. And speaking of effects, obviously you got these great reverbs here, but you can actually also use our chaos effects to do further mangling of the sound. We also have a variety of convolution impulses if it wasn't enough with two world-class reverbs. Uh, in this case here, I'm playing the patch both with the studio reverb here from the convolution and a little bit of phaser. It gives that totally sort of 70s sound. And I'm combining the DI clean here a little bit with the USA amp room. To me, that takes me straight back to the 70s. It's so alive. This does not sound like a computer-based instrument, and that's because there's so many different samples and all the different microphones and amps are playing together and so forth. Uh, let me give you um, another example here of how expressive the instrument actually is. Uh, in this case here, I'm only using the DI warm signal here, and I just want to show you how expressive this instrument actually is. Um, so I'll play two different pieces, something a little more aggressive so you can hear the velocities, and then something a little more soft. One of the great tricks with the library as well, depending on your keyboard controller, is that this uh, response button down here actually curves the velocity response of your controller. So when you move it here, um, if you move it up here, it's going to get very hard. You don't have to click very hard to get a hard sound. And the opposite when you move it to the left here. But uh, I'm going to keep it a little bit up here and try to play something a little harder and then something a little bit softer um, so you can hear what it sounds like. Um, you can also control both resonance release triggers here. The sound of keys, that's the fingers on the keys. You also have the depth, the speed of the tremolo here, if you want to do that. The stacking, which again combines both sustains and staccato together. We also have analog noise. A lot of people have requested that. They want that natural, true analog noise. So these are actually true analog noise recordings that we had in the session. So if you want that, uh, you can certainly have it in. Uh, if you use it, um, just keep in mind that you don't want to have multiple channels with it on. Just use it on one of them if you want a little bit of that noise feel. Um, the noise will stack up if you do too many of them together. But uh, uh, let me just play a little bit with this preset here. And as you can see, it actually has textural delays built in it. That's one of the things we have in our chaos effects here. We have a variety of alternative convolution reverbs down here that actually creates a textural rhythmic delay that's tempo synced to your DAW. A really, really cool sound and, and sort of pushes the notion of what the CP70 could be.
And it really has that unique, like almost percussive sound on the attack. You can almost hear a little bit of that sort of clickiness uh, in it, which I just love about it. Uh, let me try to play something um, on the little more soft side um, with the same patch here, just so you can hear how flexible it is from more aggressive to sort of more soft playing styles. And it's awesome because as you play through velocities, they have different kind of attacks. You can almost hear that natural variation in it. And you add a little bit of delay on that and textual delay and you got your great new sort of style of motion picture piano. <laughs> Another little trick in the library is actually to use our ADSR controls. Um, if you look over here on the right side, you can see in this case, I put the attack all the way up here, which is gonna create a natural swell in the sound. You can almost create sort of a boat feel with it. And I should probably also mention that everything you've heard in this video is um, from presets that come with the library. The library comes with both sort of main patches and a variety of alternative presets uh, where we really went in and mangled the microphones and amps and reverbs and all that stuff together. Let me also show um, a little bit from the prepare part of the library. Um, obviously, we have very, very comprehensive deep sampling of the CP70 in its sort of original state, both uh, with the sustained staccato and staccatissimo, but we went really far in terms of recording alternative articulations. As I mentioned in the beginning, the purpose with this library was to make sure that we never or no one else ever has to come back and sample the CP70 again. So we did a variety of prepared articulations. Uh, let me play you what is my favorite articulation um, amongst the prepared ones, our Pluck Sustain. It has a soft nature to it, a little bit percussive, but really, really full and rich in its sound, incredibly expressive. It almost sounds like there's slight harmonics in it, but um, check it out. It's um, my favorite patch, perhaps in the whole library, actually. All right, so that was the pluck sustains. Let me also show you the pick sustains. They have a more almost like hopsichordy kind of sound to them. And it's fun actually, um, you would imagine in theory that the pick sustains would sound more like a guitar, but this was more hopsichord to me where the pluck is a little more between a electric grand piano, a guitar and an electric bass, something like that. Uh, let me show you one more patch here with the muted sustains.
as you can really hear the round robin kick in on the short notes and obviously that goes for both our staccato staccatissimo and all the short notes here that they come with natural velocity layers and a bunch of round robin as well so you get natural variations in your playing style but I could go on and on and on. There is so much to show you in this library here. Obviously we have our eight vintage microphones here. We got our two world-class reverbs here. We got our main interface here with all the controls. I haven't even shown you like half of them, like the tremolo controls here actually makes it more like a Wurlitzer. The stacking function, the noise, like all the chaos effects, all that stuff. There is a lot to go through this library. We also have the auxiliary positions here, both with room and tape and prepared with room and tape as well. So you virtually have anything you could possibly ever dream of when it comes to the CP70 and 96,000 samples. So with all that said, let me just play one uh, final piece here and I'll play it in a more sort of expressive, normal piano fashion here. Uh, we'll be listening to the sustains in the main patch. We're gonna take a combination of the Brit amp and the DI warm signal, and we're gonna add a little bit of TC6000 on top of it. But most importantly, thank you so much for watching this video. We actually have a variety of other Studio Vintage keyboard instruments coming out and they're equally deep samples to the degree we're doing here. We just wanna make sure that we really, really nail these instruments once and for all. And each of them carries such a big history in music as well. So it's important for us to treat them with the respect that they deserve and create all the options available for both how they used to be recorded and how you can record them nowadays and with every single possible option you could ever dream of. So let's just listen one more time here to the CP70 sustains in its more natural state. <laughs> Thank you.